Yu-Gi-Oh! is an extremely expensive card game. Duels will spend thousands of dollars just to compete at a high level, and I'm here to prove even a budget duelist can succeed. Alright, so if you guys are wondering why there's no gameplay for this video, pretty simple. I went to two locals this week, and both times, there's something wrong with my camera. First time, battery wasn't charged enough. Second time, I forgot my memory card. Rookie mistakes, I know, but it happens. There's not going to be any gameplay for this video, but we're still going to give you a tournament report, and we're going to go into the trades that we made, we're going to go into the deck list that we used, and then next episode, you're going to see the upgraded deck list with all the trades we made. So, going into this week, we had $9.50 to work with, so we made a lot of trades. We went to two locals. First locals was a four round locals. We ended up going 1-1-2, one, one, pretty bad record. We beat Labyrinth, we lost to Branded. We tied against Ninjas in the Trap Tricks Mirror. So not a great tournament. Second locals, which was actually yesterday, um, we ended up going three and two out of five round locals. We beat Pendulums, we beat Labyrinth. We lost to Dragon Link, we lost to Branded. Then I believe we beat, oh, we beat Kashtira. That's what it is, we beat Kashtira. So overall pretty good tournament, but there's some stuff I've noticed. So I feel like the deck is actually getting worse from when the first two episodes. The reason is pretty simple. So I think it's twofold. The first is the Trap Tricks deck has now been out for a little while and the people who haven't played it or aren't playing it have played against it and now they know what they're doing. Along with that, the more we make these minor upgrades, like one card in the side deck, one card in the main deck, the more we make these upgrades, the more our deck becomes inconsistent compared to the three structure decks, but we still need to upgrade it to keep up with the current meta and how it changes. The other thing is, so I guess the third thing is, because we have more options now, we're making more misplays. Whereas before we always used to go for Adipus if we were trying to close out the game, now we have other options. Before our end board was always Seraphlesia set, cards and pass, now we have more options to go for and we have more things to consider. Along with that, people are just, like I said, people are learning how to play against trap tricks. So the metas surrounding us are becoming more competitive against us, whereas before against the OTS Championship and at the first locals, we were able to go in and do really well because nobody knew what we were doing. So we're gonna have to make some changes, we're gonna have to make some upgrades. I've got some ideas, but we're gonna see how it works. We're gonna have to test it a lot online before we actually commit to buying the cards and trading for them and trying to find them. But we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna get into the trades and then you guys are gonna see the deck list. So let's get into that. All right guys, so we're here with our pickups for this week. So it's been a couple days and we've got some good stuff to show you. Uh, a lot of trade bait, but I also made some pretty good trades. So we're gonna get into it. So first off the two cards that I picked up um, last week after the OTS championship um, from bulk bin. So we're gonna start with bulk bins and then we're gonna go to our trades. So from our bulk bins, we picked up a copy of white hole and a copy of Castell. Um, these are for our deck, so White Hole is just kind of funny because it is a whole normal trap, we can send it off for Fleezia. Some people were on Dark Hole, but I think it's just more to have rather than to actually play. And then Castell is a pretty good card, it's basically like a Silent Honor Arc, but a little bit more useful in certain scenarios, a little bit worse in other scenarios. Open up our tournament packs, we didn't get anything good. Uh, we did not pull any secret rares, any collector rares, any... Um, ultimate rares from our pack. So here's everything we got pretty much. We got a uh, Black Feather Counter, a couple Valence Hollows, Cosmic Cyclones, kind of nice. Um, Testudo Eret Newman. It might come up in some sprite builds, but I don't think it's going to come up that much. Kind of just bulk pack filler, but somebody might want some stuff. Somebody might want some Valence cards. So getting out of the trades, we'll start off with the first one. So my buddy John was able to get me a copy of Dimensional Barrier for some OTS pack filler. Um, so this is a really good card. Um, we did actually get more than one copy of this, so this is going to be helping our branded matchup a lot. Along with that, our boy Seth hooked us up with a copy of Dimensional Bearer and a Boral Sword Dragon from Magnificent Mavens for a copy of Sprite Red. So this is good, so now that we have two, we can add Trap Trick into it. So we have, if we want, we actually have five copies of D-Barrier with Trap Trick. Also, Boral Sword is great because it lets us get over Dragoon, which is so far like one of our biggest hurdles. We don't really have a good way to get over Dragoon, so Boral Sword Dragon really helps with that. Our buddy Eduardo, the big guy, only guy who had a friggin' Time Thief Redoer. This was such a hard card to find. I was able to trade, let's see, it was like a Sprite Red, two copies of Duster, and a couple other cards for the Redoer. So this is so great in the deck because you can make it with Holtea, so it has the trap effect right away. 
So it's basically just another interruption. Great, great to add onto our end board if we have the cards to spare. So at the end of the OTS championship, I did walk around and do some trades. One guy had a Book of Eclipse, which he hooked us up for. I'm really sorry, I don't remember your name, but he did hook us up with a Book of Eclipse. We found another copy of Book of Eclipse at the bulk bin this weekend. And our buddy Zach hooked us up with a Book of Eclipse that he pulled from his Tama pack. So we have three Book of Eclipse, which means we can finally play it pretty consistently, and it's really good against Cash Tira, against Sprite, um, so that's really good. Along with that, Zach also hooked us up with a Pankratops and three copies of Effect Veiler for some of the Runic cards we pulled. I believe it was like a Flash and Fire and some other like commons like Spiding Storm, just because he did. You didn't know what he had, so he hooked us up with that. And also, big one, he hooked us up with a Parallel X Seed. So now this isn't great with just the one copy, but one copy is one more than we had, so. This is really good. This Pankratops probably going to side deck. Effect Veiler is interesting. I'm going to think about uh, whether or not we're going to play it. Obviously, if we had the choice, we'd go with Imperm because it does trigger Sarah and we can send it off Hultia, but it's pretty good. Along with that, some other bulk finds. We have an Ausa the Earth Charmer. So Ausa is really good because with Ausa against Kashtir, we can use it to revive a Fenrir. And then we can use Fenrir to search a Scareclaw Kashtir, which we don't have one. But we can either pull one from the tournament pack or we can find one in a bulk bin because it is a common. And then we have three materials that adds up to a Link 4 to go into Boral Sword. So Elsa kind of against Cash Tira becomes Boral Sword and also really good against things like the Mirror Match. Along with that, the Heavy Storm Duster, we did find once and now we have two. So again, it's a Trap Tricks target if we want it, um, but also it gives us three backer removal, which is Duster and the two, the two Heavy Storm Dusters and the one Feather Duster. So we finally have a lot more backer removal. So those are all the cards that I would consider playable worthy, but then we did pick up a bunch more cards. So we're gonna go ahead and look at our binder here. So we've got all of the cards from our Trap Tricks structure decks, right? And then going on into here, we have some of our pulls. So we like have the ducks, we have some OTS back stuff, like this is where our Sprite Reds were. We have some stuff from Tactical Masters, Orange Light Gadget Gamer, stuff that's pretty decent. But getting onto this page here, we have some more stuff, the Bist Dweller. But this page is where we start getting into some, some good trade bait. So we have, along with the white hole from last week, I was able to pick up some Rickish Sheets. So there's a playset of Rickish Sheet. I know it's a one of, but it's still a good Rickish card. And we have this, this other Rickish card that I found in a bulk bin. So these aren't super valuable, but people do want to play Rickish now that there's a reprint. We also able just to pick up a lot of good cards from things like Ghosts from the Past and uh, Magnificent Mavens and Crystal Revenge, just because they were thrown away in the bulk bin. We have Baylor Druck. We have. Edgem Chains, we have Changings, we have multiple suppliers, Blackwing Assault Wing, we have a playset of dualities right there. We got Geomath Mech Final Sigma, we got Chisha, we got Sinister Long Wands, we got Vayus, Brands, Punk Dragons, Trouble Sunny, Shields, Moo Betas, uh, Vion, you know. So this is this is getting into like a lot of the really good kind of trade baity stuff that we were able to pick up. So we finally have a decent collection to start trading with, which is good. Alright, so getting into the deck list for today, the main deck didn't change hardly at all compared to last week. We have a few new things in the extra deck as well as the side deck, and next week is going to be a lot of big changes because we were able to make a lot of trades this week. So getting into it, we have Trap Tricks Pudica at 3, we have Triple Mantis, we have Triple Mermalio, Triple Arachnocampa, 2 Dianea, 1 Jinlysia, and 1 Vesiculio. I really do think this is probably the proper lineup. There's arguments to cut like Jin Lysia, put Diane up to three, but I like this this ratio. Um, getting into the main deck spells, we only have two. It's the Trap Trick Garden, so I'm not even going to show that really much. Onto our trap lineup, we have Triple Holotea. It's the best one. We have Triple Terrifying Trap Hole Nightmare, or Double Terrifying tra Trap Hole Nightmare. We have Double Grave Diggers Trap Hole, Double Trap Tricks Trap Hole, Double Floodgate Trap Hole, one Bottomless, and one Trap Hole of Spikes. Trap Hole of Spikes, I really like it because it does turn Rephlesia into a battle trick. Onto our um, kind of staple cards, we've got Triple Ash Blossom, Triple Raigeki, and Triple Evenly Matched. Evenly Matched is so good, this format. It feels so good to just evenly match your opponent for do several cards. Onto the extra deck, Triple Sarah, one Cucalario, Double Adipus. I really don't like Cucalaria, but it does come up. Sometimes you just need it. Along with that, we have our new Link 4 in Boral Sword. We have two Pingicula, we have two Rafflesia, we have one Alamaris, we have one Silent Honor Arc, one Vespinato, and our one Time Thief Redoer. Onto the side deck, we have triple Kaijus. These never came in, but they're still pretty good. We have triple Seven Tools of the Bandit. Uh, this card came up really good against Labyrinth to stop Erad. 
Uh, we have triple Grand Horn of Heaven, um, kind of a spoiler, but we did get off a Grand Horn of Heaven effect against a Dragon Link player this week, which is really awesome. Uh, we, we ended up losing the game, the match, but we won that game. We have one Double Trap Hole, one Harpy's Feather Duster, one Heavy Storm Duster, double Dimensional Barrier, and finally a one copy of White Hole, just in case, as a funny card. So that's the deck list. Not, like I said, not a lot changed, mostly the Borosaur and the Redoer and the extra deck, but we're going to hopefully change the deck up a lot, and going into next week, we'll see if we can't do better.